There's a lot more to making a good memory than just playing a good game. Sure, it being a good game kind of helps, but to make something truly special it requires being in the right place, at the right time, and being in the right frame of mind. I've given up trying to convince people to play the games I enjoyed from my childhood because the time for playing those has passed and the world has moved on. The best I can hope for is to meet other people who grew up with a similar experience of those same games and to bask in bittersweet nostalgia with them. But this video covers a more recent experience I had that I can almost guarantee I share with nobody else. But it might encourage you to seek similar experiences for yourself, because it's worth it for the memories. At the end of the day, that's all you're left with. Let me begin. Assassin's Creed Odyssey is, in my opinion, a good game, but I understand why people could see it as being repetitive or by the numbers or generic in some way. But I see it as being a decently polished game that really lets me scratch that adventuring itch that I get from time to time. And for me, in late 2018, it was my escape, my morning routine before I started with the day's work. I'd set aside an hour or two, look about the game's world map, and would pick one of the islands on the map to chip away at until I 100% completed it. It sounds boring, doesn't it? But I was frequently surprised by the diversity and the beauty of that game. Lakes stained red from where they were dying clothes nearby, massive marble quarries, those pure white rock faces visible from entire islands away, and of course, massive climbable statues. A lot of this game has got to be procedurally generated. How could it not be when it's this big? Yet there are still enough unique details everywhere that it feels handcrafted and worthy of your time to explore. I still have no idea how they can cram so much stuff into a game, especially one where most of the details will be overlooked by people rushing to finish it. Which is a shame when even a fishing village in the middle of nowhere seems to have had so much love and attention put into it, from every path to every sunny corner. Now even I don't bother keeping up with this series with every new release, I typically skip a few of the games and then when I return I'm amazed by how far it's come. So for me, Assassin's Creed is one of the more solid and consistent series out there, but with this type of game, it is definitely what you make of it. For example, one morning I decided to venture onto an island that was rated at a much, much higher level than I was. This meant that my attacks would do virtually no damage and their attacks would almost one hit kill me. How you feel about this gameplay mechanic very much depends on the era in which you grew up. I think the current trend with games like Elden Ring and those Star Wars ones is to put far more emphasis on you improving your own skills than for the game to harshly restrict you based on character level. But for me, I remember back to games like Morrowind and how leveled areas helped direct you around an otherwise dizzyingly large world map, giving you increased respect for some places and making others feel like a friendly, safe Teletubby land when you return to them at a much higher level. So I see the perks of both kinds of levelling systems. And so with this high level island, it might have been just the same enemies from elsewhere but at a higher level, but it helped it become more than just the sum of its parts and it gave the whole island an air of fear and vulnerability. And I saw it as a test to see if my raw skill at the game would be enough to get me through it. Could I outplay the game's artificial difficulty restrictions? And could I use it to score an enormous end of mission EXP boost by taking on a goliath long before I should have done? And where better to try this out than the champion's gymnasium? As per quest logic, before long I found myself embroiled in a boss fight, facing off against an enemy who would require hundreds of perfect strikes to be taken down whilst two hits to myself would be enough to finish me, and so a string of perfectly timed dodges and rolls would be required to avoid such a fate. In a way, is this not what Elden Ring is like anyway? Even just a small chip off his health bar was enough to make me feel like I was almost there. All I had to do now was to repeat what I'd done already, maybe another 9 or 10 times over. So it's doable, and yet so hard. I carried on with this self-imposed challenge of mine for several mornings. Sometimes I'd only last a few minutes, other times I'd get further, but the moment a blow was landed on me, it felt like that was it, as if I had always lost too much health too soon in the fight to stand a chance of winning. Eventually, after maybe a few dozen attempts, I managed to survive about five minutes of this instant death hack and slash and got him down to half health, which triggered a second stage of the fight where a bunch of other people joined in to bring me down. I still gave it a decent go, but it proved too difficult, and eventually I gave up challenge. It was way too much of a grind, and I just carried on my merry way. But as I played through the rest of the game, I kept thinking back to that quest. It had become more than just a generic fight. There was stuff at stake there. Who knows what wonderful rewards awaited me should I eventually vanquish that cocky Olympian trainer. Much later on in the game, when I was a much higher level, I returned to that quest and wiped the floor with all of them. Within a few minutes I was done, and the quest was behind me. For my efforts I was given a helmet and 734 drachmae, and 43,000 XP, which would have been great had I been given it earlier. But as it was, had I only encountered and attempted this quest when I should have done, it would have been just a generic fight and I'd have forgotten about the whole thing within a few days of my life. But it was thanks to my earlier failed attempts earlier on in my playthrough, and all that perseverance and dedication towards this pointless self-imposed goal of mine, 
that this quest had become something greater than being just a generic, low effort mission. It's still something that I remember many years after. So I know it is highly unlikely that anybody playing this game did the same thing as I did, and feels the same way as I do about this mission, because why would they? But is that not their loss? Have I not created something special from something that's very ordinary? And have I not been rewarded for doing that? Because like I've already said, making memories is what matters at the end of the day. And there's more to making a good memory than just playing a good game. It requires being in the right place, at the right time, and being in the right frame of mind. Maybe you can't force such things. But maybe, just maybe, you can. Ugh.